Hello, uh, Tari Leaf. Uh, man, you, you just went and killed the mystery, man. You killed the, the suspense. Now we've all seen your face. And now that we've all seen your face, you're going to have to kill us all. I know, I know what you're up to, man. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd do a, what, well, what I'm planning to be a pretty quick video response. Uh, because I like the topic, what defines your collection. Um, that's the funny thing. Uh, it's like you said, people ask you, uh, what defines your collection, and, uh, I'm thinking most likely it didn't turn out the way you might have planned originally or envisioned. Uh, at least I can certainly say that for myself. Um, what the way my de, uh, my collection is defined and the way it turned out um, is purely by circumstance. Um, you know, we get good deals. Sometimes we get good deals on certain items. Um, they just you know they pop out at us. They come to our attention. They're too good to pass up. Now I would certainly say that um, if I had unlimited funds. Or even if I were, um, you know, more than uh, moderately, uh, um, let's say, uh, comfy with my finances, my collection would probably be a lot different than what it actually is, and uh, would have turned out a lot differently than it did. But <clears throat> I tend to collect things and buy things and pick things up, either because they're a terrific deal. Um, it's just a matter of convenience, uh, and now I've amassed this large collection of hardware and accessories, computers, and consoles. And I think all along, uh, you know, there was always this intent that, um, oh man, this is just too good of a deal to pass up. Um, and maybe somewhere along the line, down the line, I can either sell it or trade it. Uh, for something that I really want, um, but then it seems that that time never <laughs> ends up actually coming or happening. It's something I'm actually in the process of now, and I hope to still do, to be totally honest. Um, now, that said, and after this uh, long introduction here, I will say what defines my collection right now, if you as an outsider were to view it, my entire collection, you would probably de um, for sure say that Atari defines my collection. Uh, specifically, the Atari 2600. Now, uh, many of you who know me, you might have thought that uh, Coleco <laughs> um, was the focal point and, and uh, cent central hub of my entire collection. But that's just not the case. Um, uh, when I started collecting, the first thing I had picked up were the ColecoVision Super Action Controllers. That was my very first video. And uh, it just kind of went from there. But as I said, just through one reason or another, a deal, a trade, something that uh, presented itself as an opportunity, I would pick things up. And uh, it's so weird because now I have so many ways to play an Atari 2600 cartridge. Um, of, uh, of course I, you know, uh, MN12 Bird, uh, recently sent me, a, a four switch Woody, which is great. That's awesome. That's like my favorite, uh, one right now. Um, prior to that, um, I, I had a Sears Video Arcade. Um, uh, I have the VCS adapter for the 5200. I have another... VCS adapter for the 5200 that's been modded to play as a standalone unit. Of course, I have the Atari 7800. I have two Atari Juniors. Um, <laughs> of course, I have the Harmony cartridge that will load up all the uh, Atari games on any one of these consoles. I have the 2600 uh, uh, module number one for the ColecoVision. Um, <laughs> And I'm sure there's a few more that, that aren't even coming to mind right now. So needless to say, 
I have so many ways to play an Atari cartridge. Oh, I even have the Atari Flashback 2. I mean, it can't play cartridges, but it does play a, a lot of the original Atari games. Uh, or I should say several of the original Atari games. And um, it's just crazy. Like, I, I did not set out or intend for my collection to be dominated by Atari 2600. It just kind of turned out that way. Perhaps maybe because there's just such an abundance of... Uh, deals out there for Atari 2600 related items. So, um, I hope to work on it. <laughs> I don't really have the time now. Um, I have other videos I should be getting to, like the EverDrive demonstration videos, uh, I know. <laughs> but uh, these video responses are quick and easy to do, so that's why I've decided to do yours. I love the topic. Uh, it's good to finally see you, know who, this, uh, who the mystery Canadian is behind the voice. Uh, and, um, if I have my wish and I have my way and things pick up and I somehow find the, the time and motivation, that's what it's really about, right? The motivation. I really do want to uh, streamline my collection, sell off the stuff that I'm, you know, not interested in. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I love Atari, obviously. I wouldn't buy it if I didn't like it. Um, but do I need two Atari Juniors? Do I need... Uh, uh, you know, two VCS adapters, uh, you know, etc. No, not really. Um, I think along with the uh, with the Harmony cartridge, the 7800, the four switch Woody, which was so kindly uh, donated to me, uh, and maybe maybe one or two other items, I will probably keep. And all the rest, I really do want to trade or sell. Um, ha had things gone uh, the way I would have wished, and uh, the central hub of my collection, or the focus point, um, would definitely be Amiga Commodore. <laughs> that was my favorite 80s computer. Uh, Commodore Amiga would be my number one choice. As it is, I have nothing for it. A few discs that somebody at Gaming Night sent me. Um, that's about it. Uh, back in the day, I had a 1200. I had all kinds of Amiga accessories. Prior to that, I had a 500. And just through time and circumstances and unfortunate uh, choices made, I ended up selling off those items. And now people tend to hoard and hang on to anything with a with a with an Amiga logo on it. So they're expensive and out of price, uh, my price range. Um, but you know, I hope someday I'll get another Amiga, a real Amiga computer. Um, otherwise, yeah. Atari. Atari is it, uh, at least for the, the meantime. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I really do want to do something to uh, streamline my collection, get it back on track. Um, it's bursting out of my closets behind the couch, the balcony, and I really want to sell off and trade off all the uh, extras. Um, I don't want really more than a couple of, of every console, uh, basically, and I'd like to trade or sell the rest off at some point so I can have it geared more toward, you know, Amiga, Coleco, Vision, you know, stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's These are the, uh, the problems and the uh, uh, issues that uh, collectors face, right? So... Um, anyways, that's it. That's my response. Uh, I hope you liked it. Um, that's about it. Rob Maximum RD out. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.